House Republicans voted to remove Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney from her leadership position today for the crime of not showing sufficient loyalty to Donald Trump. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Liz Cheney is among the very last people in the world I want to side with. For one thing, I doubt we have much in common. I've never been to Wyoming, and I have no plans to go there. Not because it isn't beautiful, which I'm sure it is, but as a New Yorker, if there isn't a bodega within a five-minute walking distance where I can get batteries, deodorant, a single roll of toilet paper, an egg and cheese on a roll, and hear people complain about de Blasio in multiple languages, I can't live there. I can't sleep unless my upstairs neighbor is practicing the flugelhorn and Someone outside is yelling, Christy says she's gonna meet us there! <laughs> Christy! More importantly, Cheney helped lay the groundwork for Trumpism and the authoritarian Republican Party that exists today. She defended illegal torture and lied about it, championed the Iraq war, and in one TV interview pointedly refused to denounce the racist lie that President Obama wasn't a United States citizen, a lie, of course, that was central to Donald Trump's political rise. One of the reasons I think you see people so concerned about this, I think that, you know, this issue is people are, are uncomfortable with uh, having, for the first time ever, I think, a president who seems so reluctant to defend the nation overseas. We've seen this again and again and again, where this president seems to sort of want to well, what, what create is that moral are you saying that, I think it are you makes saying people... because he's a Kenyan? No, I'm not saying that. No, I'm saying that people are fundamentally uncomfortable, and they're fundamentally, I think, increasingly uncomfortable <laughs> with an American president who seems to be afraid to defend America. Yeah, sure. Obama was afraid to defend America. The guy you supported in 2016 bragged about exchanging beautiful letters and falling in love with Kim Jong-un and got a soccer ball as a gift from Vladimir Putin like an eight-year-old at his first Christmas with his new stepdad. Wow, check it out, Mom. Soccer ball is way better than an Xbox. <laughs> and sure, Cheney later issued a statement saying she had no questions about Obama's birth certificate, but you don't get to have it both ways. You don't get to go on TV and defend birthers and quietly issue a mealy mouth statement condemning birthers. We all know what you're doing. It's like when I'm at a dinner party bragging about how much I got laid in college and then later on the drive home, I tell my wife I was just kidding, that I was a virgin until we met. That's why I'm so bad at sex, remember? And then she very sweetly says, I do remember. <laughs> Cheney even stood by Trump in 2016 after the Access Hollywood tape with the Associated Press reporting that Cheney said Trump's comments are appalling, but Hillary Clinton's actions are far worse. Cheney says Clinton's handling of emails as Secretary of State put her self-interest above national security. I don't know, for my money, bus pervert is worse than lax email security, but worst of all is a bus pervert with lax email security. Hey, can I uh, take your picture from my private photo collection? No one's ever gonna see it. It's password protected, and the password is one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Everyone get that? So Cheney cheered on illegal torture and disastrous wars, helped pave the way for Trump, and stood by him throughout the 2016 election and his first impeachment. But she's not being punished for any of that. She's being punished for acknowledging the reality that Trump lost in 2020 and that there was no widespread fraud and for criticizing him for inciting a violent insurrection to overturn the results. Living in reality should be the bare minimum for holding public office, and yet today's GOP is so bad crazy, simply living in reality is considered heresy, which is why today House Republicans voted to remove Cheney from her leadership position because she had the temerity to admit the Trump lost. House Republicans pushed out Congresswoman Liz Cheney as the number three ranked member of GOP leadership. According to a member in the room, as the vote happened, Cheney was booed when she criticized the former president in her opening remarks. Just like that, it's over. The House Republican conference had a voice vote. That means no recorded total and has ousted Liz Cheney from her number three position within the conference. I uh, am absolutely committed, as I said last night, uh, as, as I said just now to my colleagues, uh, that we must go forward uh, based on truth. We cannot both uh, embrace the big lie and embrace the Constitution. I uh, will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. All right, first of all, I don't think you need to worry about Trump getting anywhere near the Oval Office again. Even if he avoids criminal prosecution, runs again in 2024 and wins, I doubt he'd ever even leave Mar-a-Lago. He seems to be enjoying his new life there as the world's worst wedding DJ. The couple has requested midnight train to Georgia, and based on the election, I'll tell you what was on that midnight train, folks. Fraudulent ballots for Sleepy Joe, because at 11, 11.30, I'm winning Georgia, and then the clock strikes midnight.
toot, toot. Here comes the fraud train. Now I'm losing. With all that, again, a second wedding reference where I showed restraint and did not do Vince Vaughn. The meetings are working. <laughs> Vinceaholic Venonymous. With all that, <laughs> with all that said, it's truly unnerving that the only person in GOP leadership who will suffer any consequences from the big lie and the January 6 insurrection that resulted from it is the one person who was willing to speak out against it. The ringleaders of the insurrection, the Ted Cruz's and Paul Gosar's and Josh Hawley's of the world are walking away scot-free. Even Mitt Romney was apparently so furious at Hawley on the day of the insurrection. He screamed at Hawley, you have caused this. Now, I know there's one school of thought that you have to be a real heel to get someone as calm as Mitt Romney to yell at you, but I'm also willing to bet that off camera, my man Mitt does a lot of yelling. And I bet he's strong too, like real strong. And I bet if you and your crew and neighborhood toughs surrounded him on the bus and said stuff like, what's the matter, milk breath? You don't like how loud we are? I bet he would say, no, I, I don't want trouble, boys. But I bet the next time a bus goes through the dark tunnel, all you hear are punches and grunts. When it emerges, it's just five kids on a pile. And I bet it's just Mitt repomading his hair. And when he gets off at his stop, he says to the driver, I was never here. That's what I bet. <laughs> Call your bookie. <laughs> anyway. Only Liz Cheney will face consequences simply for living in reality and criticizing Trump's big lie that the election was stolen, which I have to say is a little surprising coming from a party that claims to believe so passionately in free expression. In fact, in his statement announcing today's vote, GOP House Leader Kevin McCarthy said, in one paragraph, these internal conflicts need to be resolved. It's clear that we need to make a change. And then in the next paragraph, unlike the left, we embrace free thought and debate. You guys are the ones purging someone from GOP leadership for questioning party dogma. You're like Dorothy, the end of Wizard of Oz. It turns out the cancel culture you were looking for was right there inside you all along. So as we saw from today's vote, the party is fully committed to Donald Trump as its leader. It has no core beliefs, no core ideology, other than the big lie that the election was stolen and that any wins by Democrats are illegitimate. That's why Republicans in a dozen states have already implemented draconian voter suppression laws, with Arizona joining them just yesterday, and at least 404 voting restriction bills have now been introduced in 48 state legislatures, including laws that would limit mail, early in-person, and election day voting with such constraints as stricter ID requirements, limited hours, or narrower eligibility to vote absentee. If Republicans had their way, voting would be as difficult and confusing as parking in Midtown Manhattan. No parking, Except for alternate Wednesdays and months ending in Z between the hours of 4 and 5 a.m. during leap years, please note this sign was written on opposite day, psych. Spent a lot of time deciding how to spell psych on that sign. <laughs> and we would just ask you all to check in with our very popular digital exclusive corrections, <laughs> which is available online and is a huge hit. Huge hit. Uh, that's what they're going to air instead of the Golden Globes next year. <laughs> and that's because the GOP has calculated that it simply cannot move on from Donald Trump, that no matter how unpopular and destructive he is for the country, they can't succeed as a party without him. Lindsey Graham was even surprisingly honest about this on Fox News last week. I would just say to my Republican colleagues, can we move forward uh, without President Trump? The answer is no. I've always liked Liz Cheney, but she's made a determination that the Republican Party can't, can't grow with President Trump. I've determined we can't grow without him. If you don't get that as a Republican, you're making the biggest mistake in the history of the Republican Party. The reason our party is growing with minorities and with working men and women is because President Trump appears to be on the side of people working really hard. He's on the side, people working really hard. And yeah, I work really hard every weekend at my Meemaw's antique store, and she ain't on my side at all. I'm sorry I broke that lamp, Meemaw, but stop saying it was a relic from the Ming Dynasty. Because Ronald McDonald was on that lamp. He wasn't around then. Donald Trump is not on the side of people working really hard. He's on the side of people working really hard for him. And even then, he's not even on their side enough to pay them. Rudy Giuliani doesn't have enough money to cover his legal fees, and I bet he's still out there trying to dig up dirt on Joe Biden, going country to country. Boss, I'm in Chile. You'll never believe what I found. Sir, would you like to order some appetizers? Oh, Rudy, you've done it again. 
Liz Cheney is as responsible as anyone else in GOP leadership for Trump's rise. This is not about heralding her as a hero because she isn't one. It's about the GOP's hard turn against democracy. She's being punished simply for pointing out that Trump lost and that his claim that he won is a big lie. Republicans have made the calculation that their party can't grow without President Trump, even if democracy can't grow with President Trump. This has been A Closer Look. God's Living Liver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.